Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jewel. I've got my camera way back today, and I know you probably can see some reflections on this glass, so let me move this stuff over. Um, we've been doing um, a project of um, ephemera, ephemera notebook, ephemera journal for storing the um, ephemera in and uh, I used a variety of different um, a different gals that inspired me. Well, I don't even have them right here, but if you've missed any of them, you can go and check out the other one. This is, uh, what I wanted to do today is I'm gonna show you the final flip through, and these were for me uh, because I needed a way to house my um, ephemera and I was checking out all of the ephemera YouTube, you know, ideas, and I kind of combined some ideas and came up with this, and um, they are all listed um, underneath in the description box. But I wanted to show you this one, and I've got another idea, because uh, I got a box in the mail, and I decided I'm gonna make one more because, uh, you know, three isn't enough. I started with this one, okay, and I think I showed you this, and this was just a notebook that I had made to house pictures in uh, out of chipboard, and I ended up um, making uh, into an ephemera folio, or ephemera journal. These aren't folios, as you can see. They're, they're actually uh, notebooks or journals. And then uh, I was playing around and I made this one. Still not enough for them. Of course, they're not full yet because I'm still organizing. And this is the one we did together. And this is the way it ended up. Um, I did end up coming in and putting a couple uh, ties on this one um, just to tie it. And that's just seam binding. Um, so we did this together. Uh, this was a craft with me and all the measurements and everything is there. And I'm in the process of filling it now with various ephemera. But I've got a, let me move these aside. I got a box in the mail and I was looking at the box and I'm like, this is such a perfectly good box. And it had some product in it. And I thought yeah, I was gonna build a new cover, you know, like we did the way we did last time. I'm like, son of a gun, this is like done for me. Here, this here, that's why my camera's back up so far. Uh, so you can see this is a big box. It, it, this would be the spine of it. And I know people have used cereal boxes to make journals and stuff like that. I've never done that. I've always used chipboard. And then I use some, um, the packaging for a couple of those folios. And, but I'm going to use this and I'm going to see, we're going to cover this. I'm going to cut off a couple flaps. And I thought, you know, this is a great idea uh, because I was thinking about keeping the box just to wrap it to house a big journal in, but I think I'm gonna use it as, as the cover of the thing. So I took apart the one side and I'm going to cut these off and then I'm gonna take apart the other side and I thought, well, let's just put the camera on and see what we can come up with. So I hope I stay in frame because my camera is up, actually I'm, tilt, I'm gonna tilt it back this way, up so high that I really can't see in the viewfinder because this is such a big box that, okay, I wanna cut these flaps off here Okay, there's that one. And I want to cut this side off. And I'm going to try to make this as even as possible because we're going to cover this with some cardstock. I probably it probably would have been better for me to come in with my um, craft knife for this. I can even it up, you know. Okay, I'm gonna cut off this side, and I hope I, 
I may not be staying in frame. I'm gonna do the best I can, but you get the general idea of my thought process here. And look, I'm gonna save these for, I probably cover them and use them for tags. Make something. Um, I don't save all of my cardboard, just, you know, just some of it. <laughs> Can't save it all. All right, so I'm going to pull out this side see what we got this is just kind of tucked here let me take my scissors let's see if I can pop this out without ripping it's a pretty substantial well pretty substantial weight box and I'm like the other side wouldn't you know now I'm on camera the other side popped right out you know what? I'm gonna have to stand up to do this For peace sakes. There we go. There. And then we'll cut off the, these flaps. You know, I told you that I I do uh, work standing up a lot. I don't know why. It just, it's some with bigger projects especially like if i'm doing any of my sprays and stuff like that in my spray box and some of my art i i i stand up for that well this is crooked but i'm gonna have to come in and cut this but the the part i liked about it is that it's got this creases in it and i've got a ready-made um and i might keep this i don't know i might keep that on the end and that would be like a little, like a little cover to the. Should have used a blade. All right, uh, I've got to cut off. Let me see. This will be the. I've got to cut off this. Right here. Actually, yeah, I'll just keep cutting here. I sh should have come in with my razor, but it's behind me in a cupboard. I've, it's a last minute thing for me to put the um, camera on, but I thought, gosh, you know, it might be an idea for somebody out there that gets a box that has a lid in the mail okay i'm going to turn this around and i'm going to cut off this last little flap i could come in let me see how uneven this is if it's too uneven i'll just come in with a now, I was thinking if this is the top, yeah, no, I'm going to cut this part off, too. Though, look, if we bend this back, this could make a nice tuck spot, but I usually don't do tucks, nah, I don't, do, I usually don't do tuck spots on the cover of my journals, because things fall out. But this could have, I could have used this, you know, as like a heavyweight pocket maybe in the journal. All right, let's see how even that is. I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit. Let me move this cardboard aside. And I wanna see the size of this. Cause I'm gonna make another ephemera folio and I wanted a bigger one, so this is good. It's about 10, it's, on, it's just under 11 inches. Now, you know, 10 and nine eighths eight eighths nine eighths uh and it's eight and three quarters eight and three quarters so that's a biggie and i think i'm going to just trim up a little bit here and we're going to cover it i did pick out you know what i'm going to try out a new tool 
this came, this is a Tim Holtz, um, this slides back and forth. I've got my camera base in the middle, middle, so let me move this up this way. This slides, it kind of goes down in the, see it's got a little, a little edge thing on it, a little dippy or like a little, just a little edge. So it can go across this, um, this cutter, this mat that I got, the glass mat. So, and you can use it. See, I'll go down here because it's, I hope I'm still in frame. And then you can use it and I can, I'm going to try it now. It looks like it might shift a little bit on this glass, but we're going to try it. I'm going to grab my razor. Normally I just use a ruler. Yeah, these are some serious blades. <laughs> Let's see how this works and see if I'm gonna be fond of this. I've never cut on this glass mat, so I'm gonna see if I like it. Ooh. Ooh. I do. I like it. There, looky there. Ooh. Okay, and let me see. I've got, I don't know if I can get this under there. See, this is too long. I got, I'm gonna have to, no, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I'll have to go to, off the edge over here, guys, and you're not gonna be able to see me. So I'm going to be out of frame for a minute because I can't, the camera base is right smack in the middle of the thing. So I am going to work off, whoops, it's shifting because I'm trying to work opposite of my, well, Almost. I just got a little bit right here. Oops, a little bit more. I must have to get my regular. I usually use metal, my metal uh, razor, or my metal ruler. A little bit there, I really need to clean up off the side that's pretty good you know what let me just let me just trim this real quick because I'm gonna be uh, out of frame okay got a little bit more here actually you know what I'm gonna do guys <laughs> I'm coming over on this side because the, the camera well, I'm just not going to be able to do it on here. I could do it this way. Actually, this does go off. I'm thinking, oh, silly me. This can go off the side over here, too. See? It just has an edge on it. Very cool. I feel like I'm getting into the, you know, with the... Let me do it this way. With the cool girls. I'm sure the more I use this doohickey, the more I'll like it. I like it so far. That's pretty cool. All right. All right, so now I've got a ready-made cover, except for we're gonna cover it, of course. All right, I picked out some papers for this next one. So I thought I would use this as the cover. I know, more glare. And I'm going to have to probably use, I've got a coordinating paper here and really, 
I have this, but I wanted to put this in the middle. This is a old graphic 45, and this was from Times Nouveau. But I'm trying to get stuff that's got, got two, it's more of a, you know, not too busy. I mean, somebody might think that's busy, but I could pick ephemera out, you know, from that. And this is, this is white on the back, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover this cover. And I'm going to have to use a coordinating co color on the back. Let me think how I'm going to do this, because this is such a big, I think I'm going to do it in the middle. And then I will come with a little coordinating on each side. I could use that or I could use, mm, don't love that because this is cream and that's white. Probably this, but I also have some pink. Oh, the pink's pretty. It's like just a striped pink and this is the back side. And I pulled this out because I want to use up this paper pad. Uh, I also have, yeah, I think I'm gonna use these, these papers on the inside and in, because I will not be using these in any journals. So um, I'm gonna use this for the inside and this, and I, we won't make this whole thing together because we've already done that once, but I will show you the final, and this, this has some green in it, so that's good. Oh, you know what? That green might work with that cover. Let me see. Oh, I kind of like the green. I might use the green as opposed to the pink. All right, let me move. Let me keep these two, so it's gonna be one or the other. Let me move this stuff aside and we will put together this cover. Just a little extra idea. I'm not even gonna take this off. I don't need to, and I know there's a bit of a glare from this because this has gold metallic on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, this is 12 inches, let me see. I want it to go right in the middle and then I will fold over the pages and then I'll have to find something for the inside. So, I've got four and a half. Let me move it this way a little bit. I should have just measured the whole cover. Okay, so then I've got three and three quarters. And a little bit more, so that's probably it. And I'll mark it. And then we'll just glue it. Perfect, right there. All right, let me get my pencil. Whoops. Okay, let's glue her on. I hope I'm not, whoops, wrong glue. I hope I'm not too far away. I guess I could bring it down, but then you'll be going for on oh, for a bumpy ride, so. Ooh, I don't want to go all the way down there. Oh, you know what I just realized, guys? I have my TV on. I'm sure you don't want to hear the news with all the politics. It's more or less, if I'm not, if I don't have YouTube videos on, it's more or less just for background noise for me. My dogs are chewing, chewing bones. I think that this will be lightweight enough, this cover. I probably should sand it a little bit. It's very, I hope it adheres pretty good because it's got a bit of a, well, we'll find out soon enough. I will be sewing it, though. 
Oh, I did sew that last folio. I don't know. I don't remember if I or a journal, ephemera a journal. I don't remember if I showed you it after I sewed it. I think I did. All right. Line her up. Okay. And with that cool little slide ruler thing, the Tim Holtz slide ruler, you order the two things and you get this from the, it's the Tonic Studios, you get this, um, I got glue on it already. It's kind of like the heavy duty credit card. <laughs> I usually use an old credit card to do this, to get my glue even, and it's great for, you know, different mediums and stuff. All right, let me get a bend in this. And then we'll put on the rest. Okay, so that will be the spine. And then we have this. Okay, so now I'm going to either use the green, the coordinating green, or there's the green. Let's see. And I might do a, a strip of trim right here. That might be pretty. Or this pink. I think I'm going to do the pink because I really don't want that side showing. These would be cute if I wanted to cut them all down for a little, you know, whatever. But I've, already, I've used this paper pad already. And I get pretty. All right. What I want to do is I'm going to cut... Let me see how much I'm going to need. Hold on. How am I going to do this? I flip it over and mark it. So I'll cut off. I'm going to need a little bit more. I was thinking if I only had to do six, if I could, I could cut this straight in half. Well, that's what I am going to do, because if we're a little short, I can put some trim, because I only have one piece of that, and this is so big, I'm going to have to cut this right smack down the middle. So this is 6 inches, or 12 inches, so I'm going to cut it to 6, just like this. Yep. And we'll glue this side here. Oh, that gives me plenty of room. And then that side on there. Now let me just see how far I need to overlap. Probably about like that. So I'm gonna mark this with a pencil. Just, well, I'm not going to see that, am I? Let me see. Okay. So let's glue on this side. I did mark a little mark right there. And this is the top. Doesn't really matter. Okay, we're gonna glue this on. And see this little notch you're not gonna see because this is gonna bend over, this is gonna fold over and then I'll cover that with cardstock on the inside. So I'm gonna actually glue right on here. Just put a little bead of glue right here. And then glue all of this.
And what I'll do is I'll show you this ephemera folio when it's all done. It's going to be done the same way I did the other ones, only I'm probably going to have to cut the pages, obviously. The page, the um, page protectors. Let me bring that in a little bit. I'm going to have to cut them um, larger. For the last one, I cut them in thirds and used two on each paper page. I'll probably have to cut them in half. Let me see if I need to, just checking to make sure I had enough glue. I have a lot of pink trim and green trim, so. Alrighty. This one's a little bit, let me move this this way a little bit. Yeah. That's why I like to use trim. Covers a multitude of sins. Say, this is, this is a little, see that's four. See, I only got three and a half here. Let me just see if I can pull it over just a tad, but that's okay. Once I put the trim on it, that's when I'll measure it and make sure that I have the same amount, you know, from the spine to where the coordinating paper is. Okay, so I probably have too much on the sides. So, and I probably have too much up here too, but that's okay. I'm going to um, I'm going to try my new fancy tool here, and my blade, and we will cut it down. Wow, it cuts so easy on the glass as opposed to my my mat, my cutting mat that I usually use. Wow. And I can cut a little bit off of here. Let me bring it over here. I don't want to cut too much. Wow, I like it. And here, I can go. Oops, didn't quite get through there. I gotta move it this way. I'm trying to move, work around the camera. It's kind of a little awkward. He has two edges on this too. Whoops! See that? I really should have done the other side. Um, there's a beveled. There's a beveled edge on this uh, ruler doohickey. And um, it kind of slants, see the beveled edge? So that's nice. Um, okay, so we're ready to fold our pages over and then we'll add a coordinating, pay, a coordinating paper for the inside, or two or three actually.
Let me find my bone folder. There we go. I didn't have much, I didn't have anything out really because I wasn't planning on doing this till just now. I'm like, well shucks, let's just, let's do it together. Kind of cut the, cut it a little uneven. Oh well. See, you can, the lines are right there. I mean, I could have lined it right up. Silly me. I do like the glass mat it's just it's a little slicker than I'm used to working on so uh, there is a little bit of an adjustment period here I cut that side a little bit too short oops I gotta fold this up So today's a holiday for my husband. It's filming this on Columbus Day. And he is painting. And he goes back to work tomorrow and then that's when I take over. So I'm not gonna be in here for probably a good two maybe three days i'm going to be working on the trim and touching up what a job so i'm going to sit down now and we're going to glue this and i'm going to have to find a coordinating paper you know what before i glue this let's figure out what i'm going to use for coordinating paper because I may run out of uh, time today, and I'm just going to show you the final project. This is pretty shiny. Um, I don't want to use that side, but this is all in this paper pad that I wanted to use up. I used all the pages that I wanted out of it for a journal that I made. Oh, this color, that's kind of cool, but I like this peachy color on the back. So all of these coordinate. That's a good one. Probably gonna use these two. Cause I don't I don't see me using that for anything. It's beautiful copper color. I mean it's really cool, but I maybe a card, you know, that would be fun for a card. I do like this. The honeycomb. use that these would be fun to make these I guess would are for uh, journaling uh, cards let me pull out the honeycomb Whew. I do not know that's bright let me just see will two be enough Two will be enough. I only have one honeycomb, so I'm gonna use these two. So that will be the inside. This part is probably gonna be extremely boring for you to watch. I watch um, a lot of my YouTube videos catching up with my gals that I like to watch and checking out new channels, so much talent out there and in the evening when 
you're not supposed to do this, but I do. I watch it right before I go to bed and it relaxes me. I put those glasses on, you know, the, the glasses that are supposed to, you're supposed to wear when you're on the computer a lot. I'm on my iPad, you know, because I do play some online mahjong and sometimes I even get into the worst thing to do at bedtime, but get into the timed, the timed uh, games. <laughs> that makes no sense. Get myself all revved up and then wonder why I don't sleep good. You know, terror bad sleep habits. I say don't watch TV in bed, you know, don't don't be looking at your computer, you know, within a couple hours of going to bed, your screen, your phone. Well, like I do it. I admit. Yeah, this is I'm going to have to glue this. This is, this box is so, um, now you see this, go lose weight, go look great, go love life. Uh, it's Golo. I know if you guys watch much TV, they're advertising the heck out of that. So it's a $49.95 supplement and you get a, some, they're supposed to help your blood sugar metabolize your blood sugar better if you i don't think i have anything wrong with my blood sugar but it's mostly just to follow their food program which i seriously i know what to do I mean, for heck, I used to, I was a personal trainer and had my own business for 15 years, certified personal trainer and, you know, did nutrition counseling and all of that, stayed great, you know, and then I got sick and went through the menopause and all that, and, you know, it just goes, goes slower. So we'll see. I looked at the food program and I'm like, oh, that's so restrictive. <laughs> it's just, it's just healthy eating. You know, I've, I used to, it was easier. We had a pool and that's my preferred way of working out because of, um, it's so much easier on your joints. This is popping up over here, but I'm going to have to sew this. There's no doubt about it. And, um, but we don't have a pool here. Um, hope we can put one in, but I don't know. Got to get some bills paid off first. My husband's 60. Was he 66 six, or 67? I can't. 66, I think. So I'd like for him to retire one day. <laughs> don't know. Does anybody ever really retire anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'd want him, you know be around here all the time hope he's not watching this uh, he, he, he pretty much knows that <laughs> I gotta have my space anyways so one more side and then we'll cut down I might be running short here on video time but the main thing i wanted to show you is if you get a box you know i guess the cereal boxes work fine too you know i just this was so this was pretty heavy that's what i liked about it it's a pretty heavy cardboard 
it's not like chipboard, but it, it's still flexible, but I thought it would be a good, wouldn't, with the car stock and everything on it, it would be a good, um, a good cover. And what I, if you guys followed along when I made the ephemera, the ephemera folio, ephemera folio, I gotta stop calling it that. It's not an ephemera folio. It's a notebook, a journal. Um, I used the backs of the paper pads, the heavier duty ones, like, like this. These are, you know, they work quite well for a flight for a flexible journal. Um, I'll use those sometimes because they are acid free, usually archival quality. So if I'm going to do a soft, you know, a soft cover, uh, or cover maybe with fabric, they work pretty well. All right that's pretty well stuck down so that's going to be my cover there's the outside there's my spine there's the back i might come in and put a little pretty trim down through there uh and then i'm going to cut this down and this is going to be and i'm just going to overlap it in the middle where i glue in my pages now these, the way I'm making the ephemera notebooks is I'm not sewing in the pages because I like this method. And I got this from Took's Craft Table. Uh, also, um, you know, I've watched Gail's. I've watched uh, Martha Man Mangrose. Her, I've got her listed under the other one. And I kind of combined three different ways, but see how took uh, I, I put the pages into the journal the way took did um and so if you're interested there is a two-parter on these and you can see how nice how nice it works kind of just go in this i need to glue a little bit better so there so that's it so i'll show you this when it's finished guys i just wanted to pop on and give you an idea of you know how you can avoid even making if you want an ephemera folio, even making a cover where it can get even easier just cutting it out and putting your paper on there okay guys thanks for watching have a blessed day Bye bye